Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Bicon Surgical Webcasts. What we will try to do today with the use of the uh, ultra short Bicon implants is the placement of uh, such an implant at the same time as the internal sinus lifting. However, for this case, because of the uh, extreme uh, atrophy of the uh, native bone and the hypertrophy of the sinus, we will begin by elevating the floor via a floor transport uh, technique. This technique will allow us to mobilize and lift the sinus before we attempt the uh, osteotomy, giving us a little bit more access, a little bit more, a lot more visibility, and certainly a lot more control. The design of the incision is going to be a trap door with the beginning of a paddle shape that will come from the facial encompassing all of the crest and going all the way on to the uh, crestopalatal corner, all right, right onto the palatal slope ever so slightly. Then we will turn around and complete it. Turn a little bit more to me, please. And finish it off with a nice wide base on the facial. Um, and so now using a Woodson, we will elevate the flap carefully and cautiously until we have full exposure. Before we continue, because we obviously anticipate using a uh, bone graft, we will collect some uh, blood from the site, which is a mixed arteriovenous blood, of course. Alternatively, you can uh, do a venipuncture and collect a little bit of blood to moisten your synthograft. The synthograft, like all beta calcium phosphate, needs to be uh, imbibed with blood. We will uh, be able to just uh, take a subepithelial bite if possible. That will then allow us to tether it to the cheek mucosa. Okay, I'm gonna, because I want to use a wider implant, I'm just going to make a mark. Okay. This is a uh, ridge split by bevel chisel, it's pretty sharp. This is five millimeters in diameter. So when I make the window, I want the window to be no wider than this chisel. So I'm going to mark the anterior and posterior extent of this window. Okay. And you only need to score it. I don't need to cut it. Okay. All right, very good. Again, we're scoring that rectangle. You see the corner here has been joined for both. We need to do the palatal end now. Okay. Right on the bridge. Oh, good. A very small uh, window indeed, but it's going to allow us to mobilize the uh, floor of the sinus within with full view which will then uh, work to uh, permit the placement of the uh, implant and I'm going more by the sound of it as um, when we are uh, uh, tapping if it's getting close to the bottom, you will hear more of a kind of a fracturing rather than a sort of a nailing type of a sound. 
especially on the palatal, where the uh, presence of the mandible obviously forces us to go in a more buccopalatal direction. Now we'll take a flat osteotome and we start tapping to mobilize. Initially, all you will have is a compression of the bony window. Okay. Okay, how are we doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you having any pain? Good. Sometimes if the mandible is really getting in the way, you may have to use an offset driver. And of course, because the um, three-dimensional character of the floor of the sinus, well, you can never know if you need to score more uh, or that you've done enough. So all we have to do is sort of trial and error. So far, we have not mobilized it as well as I'd like to see it moving. Okay, so this part I'm almost positive we have scored it deeply enough. This part is the questionable part. Can you open any wider? Good. This part here as well. It's a little bit questionable. I think it's better now. Okay, I'm gonna go back over the facial again. And then for those of you who've watched these webcasts before, um, you know that uh, sometimes it takes quite a bit of doing to get us to the final mobilization. Mm -hmm. Now there are uh, some advantages to using a piezo surgery. However, I found that um, using the osteotomes saves us from uh, a, uh, any loss of bone, except that it is very loud, so, especially if you are the patient, right? All right, good. Okay, and again, we'll mobilize it some more. And you can hear the sound is slightly different now. Okay, we start to seeing it start seeing it mobilizing into the, there we go. It just uh, mobilized on the distal, which is thinner. And we're gonna quickly and short, surely mobilize the anterior portion. Do you see it? Okay. I just wanna make sure we have it all mobilized. So I'm using a, a sinus lift curette. This area is a little bit wedged in the mesial part. And we will keep mobilizing it. All right, good. All right, we're gonna switch to a, a thinner site expander because I want to be able to exert some pressure more on the mesial as it's not mobilizing as fast as I want it to. Here we go and make sure that we are underneath the sinus mucosa, and we are. Okay. There we go. Good. Okay. We are now up to four and a half, but the bone is pretty solid, so... going to be reamed, all right? So because this opened a little bit wider, if you don't mind. A 
because this um, ridge is so wide, I will go a little bit wider. I'll go to six millimeters in diameter. Okay. And I have a nice wide uh, pallet, excuse me, buckle shelf, so I will favor it in my reaming. I'll take more of it. So all of this bone was shaved off of the uh, buckle shelf. This is the side expander. Okay, so now we know that we will have mobilized, we have mobilized the sinus. What I want to know now whether I mobilized air or actually the sinus floor. So we will take a curette and gently feel that we have uh, something resisting my pressure. I feel it on the mesial, on the palatal, on the facial, and I think more importantly, um, do I have it on the distal? That's the question. You okay? And I'll take the uh, surgery cell, and we'll just lay it across. Take this from you. I'll take this. And we'll let it get a little bit of blood moistening it. I want it to stay somewhat spread, but I want it to go into uh, the posterior part, the rear of this osteotomy. Okay. Keep putting it in there. And I'm really using this just to uh, have a better view and to isolate. If there is a little perforation, this will act a little bit to isolate the uh, the implant. Then we'll take a um, five and a half millimeter site expander, which is going to go right in the mesial the anterior portion of our osteotomy, allowing us to mobilize and pack. Okay, there is a bit of a hydrostatic pressure. We're going to seat it a little bit shallow, and then we will use, uh, we'll use a sinus lift abutment. Okay, now let's take some of this here at the center of it, and give it gentle tapping. You feel okay? I think you've had enough mm -hmm. tapping for one day, right? Mm -hmm. Almost there. Much gentler tapping than before, very carefully, allowing it to get in to the full depth. The top, here we go. The top of the uh, sinus lift abutment will lock against the crest. That's it. Done. Okay, that's it. There we are. Good. All right. It is very tempting when we have a little bit of bleeding to make the uh, in the uh, suture extremely tight, but that is really asking for trouble. That will cause uh, necrosis of the flap or breakdown of the incision or the suture. So we will close and then reassess where we are and put additional sutures if need be. So the testament that we have done the uh, floor transport correctly using the, the sinus lift abutment is that our flap is laying completely flat like when we uh, opened it 
And on the, on the radiograph, as you can see, we have the uh, implant placed within the crest by no more than two millimeters as the uh, sinus lift abutment positions it. Do you see the sinus lift? You see the native bone. So this implant is mainly and practically only in contact with the uh, sinus lift newly placed graft. But as a testament to the plateau designed implant, this one will integrate at the same time as the bone is turning over. There was most likely no perforation. However, we do have a, a bunch of uh, surgery cells that will become part of the, uh, the scar and we will have integration. Thank you again and goodbye.